Hello and welcome to this ICON Data API tutorial. My name is Eve. I'm founder and managing partner of the Python Quants. Today's tutorial is about algorithmic trading and in particular, going to cover vectorized backtesting with Python. We will mainly make use of Pandas, the powerful data analysis package. And the strategies that I'm going to use are based on simple moving averages. In one case, it will be based on end of day data. In the other case, it will be based on one minute bars so that we have also an intraday strategy to backtest. The agenda is as follows. We first retrieve end of day data. We'll have a look at the data. Then we derive the necessary statistics. In particular, these will be two simple moving averages that we calculate based on closing prices. We then formulate the strategy based on our statistics, which we can then in turn use to do the vectorized backtesting based on lock returns. Vectorized refers here in this context to the way the code is written. Uh, we will see that vectorized coding allows us to come up with rather concise implementations of such algorithms. We won't see any loops to name just one characteristic there. Then we will move the whole analysis to intraday data and we'll repeat the analysis based off, based on one minute bars. Let me jump to the Jupyter Notebook. Here in this Jupyter Notebook, you see that this tutorial is about data retrieval. We're going to use the standard tools, data analysis with, with Python and some particular pandas, but also Plotly and Cufflinks. We will derive this statistics and formulate the strategies and will backtest it. Simple moving averages, as simple as they may sound, are a decades old strategy in terms of technical stock analysis. And there are also quite a few scientific research papers. And I've provided here in this Jupyter Notebook one, uh, which was published uh, back in the 90s uh, by a team of authors in the Journal of Finance. In what follows, we will implement uh, such a strategy based on two SMAs, a shorter one and a longer one. And uh, the basic idea will be that when the shorter one is above the longer one, then we would like to be long. The market, the stock, or whatever we are trading, and vice versa, meaning in the other case, we would like to be short. Let me get started with some imports. This is the typical first steps and a quick look at the versions that we are using here for this tutorial. And the first important step, of course, is the connection to the ICON data API, which happens based on my credentials, which in turn are stored in a configuration file. Once we are connected to the proxy or the application which is supposed to run in the backend, we can retrieve, for example, data here for the Apple stock. And I'm retrieving data for multiple years here, but just the close field. We're only interested in the close data. Having a look at the beginning here, 2010, it starts on the 4th of January and it ends given my parameterization at the end of April in 2018. So we have a total of 2,095 data points that we work with. If I plot the data normalized, you see Apple has shown obviously a good performance over time. And we want to see whether we can apply an SMA based strategy to come up with even better returns. So first we need to derive the SMA values themselves. To this end, I first define the short lag, the shorter SMA window, 42 days, roughly two months, and 252 days, which should represent one trading year, roughly. Pandas provides easy means to come up with rolling statistics, not only simple moving averages, we could calculate other statistics there as well, but the basic working is as follows. I have the time series data here. I define a rolling window with a respective size of, in the first case, 42, in the second case, 252. In our case, this will be days. Um, later on, this uh, will be minutes, or this can be any other um, time interval, depending on the data that we use. We calculate the mean for every such window. 
having a look at the head, we see that, of course, at the beginning, we don't have yet enough data to come up with a statistic. Towards the end, we have data. So we need at least 42 data points to come up with uh, the first statistic and 252 data points to come up with the second statistic. Now we can plot the three time series. We see kind of a typical uh, chart here where the orange line are the closing prices and we have the blue line for the first SMA and the green one. Uh, a little bit slower moving as you can see here graphically for the longer one. The basic idea would then be to say, well, whenever SMA1 is above SMA2, we would like to be long and if uh, there's a crossover, we would short. And here we see, for example, one crossover when I zoom in. Up until this point, the strategy would say, well, we should be positioned long, and from that point on, we would go short. But this can be formalized with Python, and this is what we will do shortly. First, I take care of the not a number value. So at the beginning, we don't have complete data. So in order to not run into any issues here, um, I first, before I proceed, get rid of the not a number values by dropping all the respective rows where we have at least a single not a number value. The strategy formulation now itself uh, is based on the idea already expressed. Formally, what we add to the mix is that we say, well, a long position is represented by a plus one and a short position is represented by a minus one. This simplifies calculations to follow. And the line here, as you can see, this is a single line of code which represents a condition which is evaluated on every single element of this vector of values compared to the other vector of values. These are two columns from the same data frame that we have just defined before. And whenever the condition is true, we put a one. Whenever it's false, we put a minus one. When I now add this to the plotting, we see here the new purple line, which has a completely different scaling. Therefore, I've put this on the second y-axis. And you see here in the beginning, it indicates that we should be positioned long. Then here at this point, we have the case that I showed before. Exactly at this crossover, we see that the position changes. And it changes to minus 1. Here it changes another um, time and so forth until the end, where we end up with a long position. Um, there might be a reversal here, but we don't know. So we just stick to the data that we have here. And uh, this is the basis for the strategy and that it explicitly says where we should be positioned, how long, short, and at what point we should trade, should change the position. Now we need to transform this into performance measures. Uh, based on the positions just defined here in the last step. So vectorized backtesting now, as you can see, translates into a bunch of single line expressions. So single line assignments, calculations, or maybe also some plotting uh, methods that we call. But basically, you won't see any for loop or whatnot that might be typical in other languages. And here we have everything vectorized, which arrives from the mathematical vectorized operations like a scalar multiplication, for example. So here first we define the lock returns vectorized. And when we have a look, we see here the lock returns. We now get a new not a number value, which I immediately make sure that we drop it. And when I have a look at the returns in the form of a histogram, we see the frequency distribution of the returns. Wouldn't expect this to be normally distributed, but um, yeah, I think we have um, something typical for tax stocks at least. The next step is to derive the returns for the strategy. To this end, we combine our positions with the returns of the underlying. Meaning that when we are long, we earn what the underlying earns. And if we are short, we earn the negative value of that. So um, here we multiply positions by the returns. But we need to make sure that we do not introduce any foresight bias. And to this end, I need to shift the positions by one day. So the basic idea here is that we set up a position yesterday, 
just before the close and we check the performance of the position of the trade next day just before the close. So we need to decide on the position for today before the market opens and this is a simplified way of doing it and it avoids introducing any foresight bias here. So once I have this column, I can now sum up and this is the beauty of using lock returns. I can use a simple sum here and sum up all the single lock returns, both for the benchmark investment as well as for the strategy and can then apply the exponential function to come up with the absolute performance. So here you see returns 3.5, which means for every dollar invested, my passive benchmark investment in Apple stock gives $3.58. The strategy in comparison yields for every single dollar invested 5.08 cents here in this particular case. Of course, there is no guarantee that this works over other time periods, that this works for other strategies. Um, so please be careful. This is just a simple example, which is supposed to illustrate the technical approach and is not meant to be an investment advice or something similar. So the performance can, of course, also be visualized over time, which is usually the best way to get a grasp of what is happening. And here we see that in the beginning, uh, we have a long position, so returns and market are the same. And then things go further with a short position. And towards the end, we again move um, with in line almost in parallel, we could say, um, with the market. And towards the end, we see the gap, so to say, the outperformance here in this case. Now let us check such a strategy based on intraday data. To this end, I define a new rig. So we're going to consider the euro yes dollar currency pair. And we retrieve data for the 7th of May, minute bar for a couple of hours for this single day. And when we have a look, see so here, this is now quoted in one minute increments. Now we have a total of 361 such rows. When I plot the data set, you see, well, here we have um, um, picked out a time period where the quote is going down a little bit, not that much. We always need to consider here scaling of course on the left hand side now we add the smas and we visualize the resulting data set and to see here as before the blue one is the shorter sma and the green one is the longer one and just a quick inspection here so over this period for example we would expect that the position is short and that given um, the drop here in the currency pair quote, uh, we would make positive returns while the market, on average at least, on average, while the market is going down. So just a quick check, but of course we need to take into account all the net results and so forth. So only the calculation and the summing up will give us the proper indication of the performance. So to this end, I, as before, derive the positionings and can visualize these. So I see we have uh, intraday a couple of repositionings that are happening here and in addition of course I need the lock returns so I do the drop an A and when I now calculate the uh, strategy returns here given the positionings and summing them up we see oh well the strategy has a slightly really slightly positive performance while the market here the currency pair is going down and when I now do the plotting we see that we have an outperformance in the second part and this is basically the part that I have been referring to before where we see that this is where the strategy uh, gains some crown compared to the uh, market returns that are on average negative for a longer time period a little bit more than well, let's say close to one and a half hours Again, this is no investment advice. The um, 
numbers have been chosen more or less arbitrarily. So there is no guarantee that these numbers, for example, would work on a different data set, different time window, different underlying um, over different time periods or the other way around. Uh, it doesn't say that there are other parameters that are not better than the ones we're using here. So more or less arbitrarily, but um, given the arbitrary assumptions that we make here, at, we, at least we see some positive results, but be assured there are many cases where the result might be uh, worse than the passive benchmark investment. In conclusion, based on this tutorial, you can say that it's easy to retrieve historical end of day data as well as, as, well as intraday price data via the icon data here. We've seen it here for the stock or for um, a currency quote, currency pair quote. And we use Plotly and Cufflinks to visualize financial data conveniently. Uh, we can zoom in, we can analyze, for example, certain situations where there are crossovers in our simple moving average, for example. And in particular, we should emphasize that Pandas is indeed a really powerful data analysis tool, which allows you to formulate and backtest trading strategies algorithmically and concisely based on vectorized code. This means typically that you have a concise implementations that are B also pretty, pretty fast because under the hood, Pandas is optimized for speed and everything here runs in memory. So you would expect really high performance, even if you move towards large scale backtesting programs. As usual, you find Icon Data API developer resources towards the end of the notebook here. Feel free to explore these and to see and watch out for updates. This brings me back to the agenda. We've covered these five points. And for me, it remains to say happy Python coding and also happy algorithmic trading. See you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.